It's a potentially deadly condition, virtually unknown to many of us before Fabrice Mwamba suddenly collapsed on the pitch two years ago. But now a teenager from Hampshire has devised a better way of detecting a heart defect that so very nearly claimed the footballer's life. 18-year-old Henry Roth is affected by the same condition, which is more difficult to detect in some people. And Henry joins me now with heart specialist Dr Nabil Sheikh. Well, thank you both for joining us this Good evening. Good evening. Henry, let's start with you. Now, this condition to give it its proper title, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, also known as sudden cardiac death. Well, yeah, I mean, it accounts for over one third of sudden cardiac deaths. OK. So, um, so it's the single largest cause. Mm. Um, and... I must add that um, I'm thankfully not affected by it, but okay. I, I did have an uncle who died at okay. 21. Mm. Um, I've consequently had all the screening, though. Mm. Um, so, you know, I've been in close contact with, with cardiologists. So, um, but I'm thankfully mm. in the clear. Well, of course, because you have that connection with your uncle, you're very interested in, in the subject. And you were researching the condition, weren't you, at St George's Hospital? And you, right, yeah. you, you've made a very significant discovery, haven't you? So, yeah, so I, I set out to sort of research how we could better diagnose this mm. condition. As I saw, it's, it seems to be incredibly hard to diagnose. Um, and when I was reading about it and liaising with the, my project host, um, I found that it's actually incredibly hard to diagnose in one group in particular, and that's athletes. Mm -hmm. And that's because this disease is characterized by the thickening of, thickening of the heart muscle. Mm. But so also is athlete's heart. And you would expect an athlete to also suffer from athlete's heart. So, Physicians are really left with a dilemma mm. because they can't use traditional diagnostic techniques such as just looking at the structure of the heart. So they have to use other parameters. And that's what my research really specialised mm. in, is looking at how we can first of all critique that and then use what we find from critiquing it, critiquing it mm. and then what improvements can be made. Uh, well, Dr Sheikh, let's bring you in here. How, how significant uh, a discovery is this and, and how will it be implemented in practice? How can it help? Well, it's certainly a step in the right direction. As Henry mentioned, mm. um, one of the problems that we face in day-to-day -day practice when we see athletes is that they develop in response to exercise, ECG changes and a thickening of their heart muscle. And certain groups of athletes, such as Afro-Caribbean athletes, black mm. athletes, develop that to a greater extent than Caucasians. So we're often left with a dilemma when we, see, when we see an athlete in clinic and they have these ECG changes and thickening of their heart muscle as to whether this represents just simply their physical training regime mm. or whether it represents <coughs> this condition, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which can produce the same changes. And it can become very difficult with just the standard tools that we use in some people to differentiate what is normal in physiology mm. and what is pathology. And certainly anything that can aid in that um, is, is very, very useful. And it's been shown in the past that this technique that Henry used is useful in mm. distinguishing the condition hypertrophic cardiomyopathy from athlete's heart in white athletes. What Henry did was apply that to black athletes as well and, yeah. and found that they develop significantly different values to, to white athletes. So that research needs to be taken forward. Very significant. And, and Henry, you're going to continue, aren't you, with this? You're going to return to St George's Hospital because you also won a competition because of this discovery? Yeah, so I was um, runner-up in this year's National Science and Engineering mm -hmm. competition and um, I also won a place at this year's London International Science Youth Forum, which mm. is just down the road uh, at Imperial. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're, you're completely right. So in September, I will go back to St George's and um, really start to develop what these mm. values could be. You know, look at large cohorts of uh, Afro-Caribbean athletes. Yes. Because all I, you know, I found that there is a difference between the peak ox oxygen consumption. So it's, you know, potentially it suggests that it's wrong to use the same cutoff values for yes. Caucasian and Afro-Caribbean athletes. Well, it's, it's a fascinating yeah. subject and I congratulate you again. But thank you both for coming in this evening and talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.